about who's watching, hallelujah. I can't be concerned about, hallelujah, what they think, hallelujah. You know what? Oh, what's she going out to the altar for? Hallelujah. She's doing all that snotting and crying. Hallelujah. What's going on with her? I don't care what you think. Hallelujah. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how you give me the googly eyes. Hallelujah. I got to make it to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he is the only one, hallelujah, who's able to deliver me and set me free. Hallelujah. How many know, hallelujah, that God is able to do just that for you? You got to have faith. Hallelujah. Woo, glory be to God. So she kept the faith and she pressed her way to Jesus. Hallelujah. And hallelujah, when the altar call is given, you got to keep it. You got to go out there. Don't let the enemy stop you. You have to make it out into the aisle. Hallelujah. Because how many know God already knows what you need? He already knows what you stand in need of. Hallelujah. All he is wanting you to do, hallelujah, is to make up in your mind that you're tired. Hallelujah. Living the way that you are. Hallelujah. And you want to be delivered and set free. Let's look at Romans 3 and 23. Hallelujah. It's a familiar text. Hallelujah. Romans 3 and 20, 23 says what? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. We all have sinned. Hallelujah. And come short of the glory of God. So I don't know why you sitting there looking at me. Hallelujah. Because you got some stuff that's wrong with you too. And you need to deliver it. Hallelujah. And make it to the altar too. Hallelujah. So because we all, the Bible said we all have sinned. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter if you're seeking. Hallelujah. To be saved. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter how long you've been saved. Hallelujah. Make your way to Jesus and be free from the bondage of sins and obtain forgiveness of your sins. How many know that forgiveness is for everybody? Jesus died for the remission of your sins. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you have done or how bad, hallelujah, you feel that your sins are. Hallelujah. Forgiveness is for you. Hallelujah. Jesus loves you and he is ready and willing to forgive you of your sins. Don't allow the enemy to make you feel, hallelujah, that what you have done is too bad to be forgiven. Hallelujah. Don't let him trick you from obtaining your forgiveness from Jesus. Jesus is able to forgive the worst of sins. There's nothing too hard for God. How many know that he, hallelujah, can do anything but fail? Hallelujah. Jesus will forgive you of whatever, hallelujah, whether it be murder, fornication, adultery, drunkenness, a drug addiction, lying, deceitfulness, hallelujah, whatever your sin, hallelujah, that you need forgiveness of, Jesus forgives, hallelujah. God's plan of salvation reaches those far off geographically, culturally, and also morally. No one is outside the reach of his redemptive love. Let me say that again. No one is outside of the reach of his redemptive love. God's redemptive activity will encompass not only the Jews, but the Gentiles as well. Among the first century Jews in Palestine, many groups were considered ceremonially impure, including the shepherds, tax collectors, camel drivers, custom collectors or and tanners. Also included in this group were prostitutes who were not only ceremonially but also morally impure. The sinners were the social outcasts, they say, of the first century Judaism. While most of the religious leaders would affirm that all people sin, these sinners would be those who sin with a deliberate disregard for the law or simply those who were outside of the Jewish people and therefore is no way connected to the law. This group would have been excluded from the covenant blessings of Israel. Now, Jesus interacted with sinners with no discrimination, which attracted the hostility, they say, of the Pharisees. We must be careful to look down upon those who don't match up to our standards. We must be careful. As a Christian, it is our obligation to show ourselves friendly to those who are not saved. How can sinners be one to Christ if we don't show the love of Christ? We must go into the hedges and highways, and we must compel men to come. 
Ask yourself, when was the last time you brought a homeless person to a meal, a homeless person a meal and told them about Jesus? When was the last time you invited a man or woman to men's prayer or women's prayer? You know, and you knew that they were going through something. Or when was the last time you struck up a conversation with someone in line and during the conversation you invited them to church? Hallelujah. Invited them to salvation. How many know that we are living in a world where people are seeking answers? And we have the answer. Hallelujah. And we keep it to ourselves. Hallelujah. And we have the answer. Hallelujah. And we're not doing our part to tell them about the one who is able to forgive them of their sins and to show them the love that they are so desperate in need of. In this lesson today, the woman who anoints Jesus, she was a sinner. Luke doesn't tell us what uh, has made her a sinner. She may have committed, they say, moral sins, or chances are that almost, uh, chances are that she was also was not Jewish, but Jesus welcomes her efforts to honor him. This results in the removal of her moral shame. She recognizes who Jesus is, and he forgives her of her sins. She is in need of grace. How many are in need of grace this morning? And Jesus provides it, showing that his grace is available to all. If Jesus is able to forgive those of their sins, we sh of her, her of her sins, then we should be able to forgive others of their mistakes. Hallelujah. Not to hold them against them. Because, you know, we're good about that holding stuff against folks. Hallelujah. We must remember that one day, hallelujah, we might find ourselves in the need, in the position to need forgiveness. Hallelujah. We can't be so heavenly minded, hallelujah, that we are no earthly good to nobody else. Hallelujah. You see, the central point of today's lesson, hallelujah, about Jesus is that he has the authority and power to forgive sins, hallelujah, even for those, hallelujah, who have sinned badly. Jesus, in Luke 5 and 20, is a powerful affirmation about who Jesus is. He is the one who mediates God's forgiveness. God's basic way of transforming his people is through the offer of grace and forgiveness. Without the opportunity to restore a broken relationship, the way back to God, hallelujah, is blocked. Some people would like to start over again, but are not assured it could be done. However, Jesus shows through his example of, his notorious sin, of this notorious sinning woman that no hole is too deep for God's reach, hallelujah, by his amazing grace and deliverance. Like the songwriter says, hallelujah, songwriter says, if you have to reach what? Way down, hallelujah, Jesus will pick you up. If you have to reach way down, Jesus will pick you up. If you have to reach what? Way down, hallelujah. It's the woman's faith, hallelujah, in Jesus that brings her forgiveness and salvation, hallelujah. Now, the truth needs to be told that the sin is not unimportant to God. Let me say that again. The truth needs to be told that sin is not unimportant to God. Sin separates us from God. Let me say that again. Sin separates us from God. When we sin, we regret and reject the will of God and ourselves at the cross purposes with God. This rejection of God and God's will keeps us from having the relationship with God that with God that God wants us to have and it results in sorrowful guilt. The good news is that God forgives us through Jesus. The one who is willing to die to attain the position that authorizes him to forgive. Thus it is the length to which God goes to offer forgiveness that is unmistakable sig signal of the seriousness of sin. sin. Sinners must change their behavior. Hallelujah. Forgiveness through Jesus Christ restores our relationship with God and allows us to live in, a, in peace with God and with others as well. Let me say that again because that's important. Forgiveness, hallelujah, through Jesus Christ restores our relationship with God. 
We want to have, when we're in sin, hallelujah, we must be restored back to God to get in the right relationship with him. Hallelujah. And when we do that, it gives us peace with God. How many want peace this morning? Hallelujah. And it gives us peace with others as well. In today's lesson, we see the forgiveness that comes through Jesus Christ. And how many know forgiveness brings joy to our lives? Because when you know that you're not doing the right thing and you are in sin, hallelujah, you're hiding, you're dipping, you're, dying, you're doing all kinds of stuff. You don't want to be seen, hallelujah, because you know you're not in the right relationship with God. So to get back in the right relationship to God, hallelujah, you got to seek him. You got to go to him. You got to ask him for forgiveness. You got to make your way to the altar. If you've done something to, to offend somebody else, you got to get that relationship right. Hallelujah. Because you can't get back to God and be right with God until you get back with a relationship with the person that you fell out with. Glory be to God. Whew. How many want forgiveness this morning? Hallelujah. Luke 7 36, it says, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house, and he sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she, saw, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat at the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at the feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with her tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. Now, here we see a fearless woman. Jesus is invited into the home of a Pharisee named Simon. Now, Simon was overly confident Pharisee that was about to look down on a sinful woman. And on Jesus, in the mistaken assumption that the Savior did not know, did not know who, who he was coming in contact with or who the woman was. He was soon to be doubly humble for his arrogant presumption. Hallelujah. The Pharisees had just criticized Jesus for eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners in verse 34 of, uh, of Luke, Luke 7. Now Luke 7 and 34 said, The Son of Man is coming, eating and drinking with thee, saying, Behold, a gluttonous man and a winebiber, a friend of publicans and sinners. Now because he did not show partiality, he had accepted an invitation to eat dinner at the home of Simon. See, Jesus don't show partiality. He loves everybody. He wants everybody to come into his saving house. He wants everybody to be in a right relationship. He intertwines with other people because he wants you to get it right. Hallelujah. Now, the meal may have been more of a banquet than simply just a lunch or dinner, they said. Now, Jesus would have been reclining, you see, on his side in a low couch and his head near the table. This was the usual position for eating. He was rested on one elbow, and he would have had his feet, they see, stretched out behind him. Back then, normally sandals would be removed at the door, and the guest's feet would be washed by a servant. But this must not have happened, according to what Jesus says and to the host later on. The dinner was for invited guests, but it was not completely private. Others could enter the room and sit around the perimeter while observing and listening in on those involved. This, that is not why the woman with the bad reputation, this is why, excuse me, this is why the woman with the bad reputation was able to enter the room because anybody could some, come in. Nothing is said about her except that she was a sinner. As an outsider to such a public celebration, she would have been consigned to sitting by the wall and just observing. As uh, observing the guests. She was supposed to just come in because she wasn't supposed to be there. And eating the leftover scraps of food. You see, this woman was not here to observe, but she was here to act. She wasn't there to observe, but she was there to act. She brought an alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume, not just the ordinary olive oil. You see, the alabaster jars were made from special stone from Egypt, and they were beautifully carved, they say. 
They usually had long necks where they were, when they were broken off, hallelujah, when the continents were to be emptied. Now, everything about this was expensive. The woman went to Jesus and wept over his feet, dropping her tears on him. She wiped them with her hair and kissed them and anointed them with the oil from the jar. You see, this woman was furious. Hallelujah. She crossed two barriers, you see, to do what she had to do. She crossed a gender barrier because according to culture, the woman, the women were supposed to keep their hair covered. Wiping his feet with her hair would have been considered taboo. Second, she was a sinner, and he was, Jesus was a distinguished rabbi. Her place was to be outside, hallelujah, other than with the other sinners and, and the other rejects, as they called them. In spite of this, she was bold enough to approach him. Hallelujah. She was fearless, you see. Her desire to meet Jesus and to honor him was greater than any barriers in her way. Critical observation here is that in verse 39, we are introduced, hallelujah, more fully to this Pharisee named Simon, who overestimated his own righteousness and thought this woman was in and thought of this woman in a belittling way. He did not verbally express it, you see his thoughts, but Jesus knew what he was thinking. He also had a low opinion of Jesus, thinking that he was, hallelujah, not a prophet or anyone else with special insight, because if he had known, hallelujah, what this woman, who this woman was, and who was sharing him with this attention, Simon concluded that Jesus was no more than a common man. Few women with such bad reputation would have approached the home of a Pharisee, but you know she was fearless. You got to understand she was fearless. Therefore, Simon was quite shocked to see her enter. Not only did she enter, but she approached Jesus immediately and began to shower him with attention. Jesus was special to this woman. How many know that Jesus is special to us? And, her, and giving her the boldness to come. Simon was certain that Jesus did not know who this woman was and did not have the ability to discern the truth about her. Not only that, but what bothered Simon the most, you see, is that Jesus allowed this woman to even touch him and that the process lasted for quite a time. Simon felt that the only true prophet, only a true prophet would have been able to put a stop to it. Simon was not concerned about her spiritual need or interested in helping her in any way. Simon wasn't cared about her because she didn't even, she didn't, she didn't, she, he knew that she had a bad reputation and she was not supposed to be there. He just looked down on her as being a sinner. And that reminds me of those who are so ready for the benediction call that they don't have a concern for those who are tearing at the altar or for those who are going in and moaning and asking God for strength at the altar. Hallelujah. Somebody cried loose here because we can't be so much in a hurry when we have, hallelujah, those that are needing forgiveness and those who are needing being saved. Hallelujah. When a benediction is called, we can't be ready to run out of here. Hallelujah. Because we need to be praying and asking God to intercede. We should be interceding on the behalf of those that are here who are at the altar. We have to remember that at one point in time, that was you seeking God's grace and your mercy. Simon mentally judged her as a sinner. Because verse 40, hallelujah, Simon, Simon immediately adjusted her as a sinner. Because verse 40 said, And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say to thee. And he said, Master, stay on. Verse 41 says, And there was a certain creditor that had two debtors, one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them what? Both. Tell me, therefore, which of them have the love for him the most? Here we see an illustration. Jesus shows Simon that he is truly and really a prophet. In a cordial exchange, Jesus addressed Simon by his first name. And the Pharisee respectfully responded by calling him what? Master. What follows reveals that Jesus did not indeed did indeed know what kind of woman was showering him with attention. He also knew Simon's heart. Instead of verbally chastising Simon without warning, 
Jesus used an illustration to draw an opinion from Simon. From his answer, Jesus would make a point. Jesus, how many know Jesus often used parables? And in this parable, two debtors owed a creditor some money and owed the creditor some money, and one of them owing 500 and the other owing 50. Now, neither one of them had the money to repay what he owed. So the lender unexpectedly forgave them both their entire debt. The one debt was 10 times greater than the other, but both of them were huge amounts. Now, which one considered to be a debt? And that, that considered, at that time, it, it was a day's wages. So what, who would love the lender more? The credit in Jesus' story depicts, that, depicts God, and the debt, and the debt repeat, depicts sin. The two debtors depict different levels of sinners. The one with the smaller debt depicted Simon, the Pharisee, and the one with the larger debt depicted the sinful woman. Now, the point of the parable is that God, is that God in his grace, is willing to forgive all sins beyond expectation. Sinners who realize what he has done will be deeply, deeply grateful. Now, without explaining this to Simon, Jesus posed a question to him about which debtor would have more to love in his heart for the lender. Now, because he was not ready to underst really understood that Jesus had also had read the attitudes of his heart, Simon had no idea that the parable had anything to do with him. We must understand that God knows the heart of man. He knows what we are going to think before we even think it. So Jesus already knew what Simon was thinking in his heart. Nothing is hidden from God. Hallelujah. Now, verse 43 is the affirmation. Now, it says that Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom forgave most, and he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. Now, by answering, I suppose Simon's answer revealed some uncertainty even though it should have been an obvious one. The answer to Jesus' question may not have been obvious to Simon, though he, he seems to have known very little about forgiveness and love. Simon's answer was correct because the one who had forgiven the most should have been the one who had loved the creditor the most. Jesus therefore affirmed that he had answered correctly, having judged the situation accurately. Now, in verses 46 through 44 through 46, an intent of host is what we'll see here. Jesus had implied a contrast between the two debtors in his parable. So now he applied the contrast between Simon and the woman. Jesus referred to the series of social, socially proper activities of greeting that a host would normally show when he, a guest was to enter into his home which none of these that Simon followed. Now, the first thing that normally happened when a guest entered into the home was the washing of the feet by a servant. But Simon had not provided this courtesy to Jesus at all. But this woman who was a sinner, now the Pharisee thought that he was better than this sinful woman, but he wasn't following the, day, the customs of that day. Hallelujah. So, when he came in, he didn't wash, the servant didn't wash his feet, but this woman had washed Jesus' feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair, showing how fearless and how grateful she was to the master. Take note that the fact that her hair was hanging upon was, uh, uh, was an indication that her sinful, uh, of her sinful occupation and something that would have added to Simon's critical attitude. You see, Simon had given no customary cordial kiss of a greeting, but from the time that the woman entered into the room, the woman had continuously kissed his feet. Hallelujah. It is also a normal custom, they say, to anoint a guest's head with a small amount of oil. But Simon had ignored to do this as well. 
Now the woman, on the other hand, had anointed his feet with the expensive ointment. Hallelujah. The contrast could hardly have been greater, but by now Simon must have been squirming in his feet, hallelujah, in his seat, regretting, hallelujah, for inviting Jesus over, hallelujah. Because with a loving, we're talking about a loving worshiper, the vast amount of sin represented by the presence of this woman had already opened it, been fully forgiven, hallelujah, by the evidence, hallelujah, it was in the deep expression of love that she was displaying to Jesus. Jesus made no comment about this spiritual condition to Simon at this point, but has a statement by being forgive, forgiven little and loving little in return, certainly put the spotlight on Simon. He had not responded to Jesus' invitation. In this story, it is a grateful woman, hallelujah, not the stingy religious leader whose sins were forgiven. Although it was God's grace, through faith that saves us and not acts of love or generosity. This woman's act discriminated, uh, demonstrated her, two, her true faith, and Jesus honored her faith. This woman's act of humility and love shows that she had been forgiven. Jesus did not overlook her sin. He did, hallelujah, in fact know that the woman was a sinner. And he knew her sins were many. But the fact that her sins were forgiven caused her to overflow with much love for Jesus. The woman love did not cause her forgiveness, for no one can earn forgiveness. Her faith in Jesus, despite of her many sins, is what saved her. We must all ask ourselves, where do we stand in our relationship with Jesus? His invitation still stands. Come to me all that ye, that ye la that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, by hallelujah, and meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul. The words are not right to the point that sins are forgiven. Those sitting at the table were horrified. Who is this that forgiveth sins also? They reacted this way because they did not recognize Jesus as God. Let's look at Mark 2 and 7. They did not recognize who they, who they were with, who was in attendance with them. Mark 2 and 7, how does it read? Why does this man thus speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but who? God only. Now, they saw him as a mere human, so his pronouncement was blasphemy. Jesus was not finished, however. Thy faith saved thee, and he told her to go in peace. How beautiful these words must have sounded to this woman who was a sinner, who had not known true peace in her heart for many years. Sin does not, sin that, does that to us. There cannot be a real peace in anyone's heart as long as he continues to refuse to allow Jesus into his life. Jesus purchased this peace for us all with his blood. You can receive this gift by trusting in God in the midst of life's storms. How many are going through storms today? We all have sinned and we all are in need of forgiveness. Therefore, we are to be forgiving. The story before us today of this simple woman reveals that Jesus brings God's forgiveness even to the people who publicly do things that hurts others. We must be forgiven. As we remember to be grateful for this forgiveness we, must, we have received, we will pass that forgiveness over to others. At least part of the gift we are given in Christ is the motivation and power to forgive others. Jesus knew that this woman's sins were many, but her boldness to come into a place where she wasn't supposed to be, hallelujah, granted her the forgiveness of her sin, hallelujah. Even though Simon, hallelujah, looked down upon her, how many know there will be people that will look down upon you, hallelujah, but God loves you and you have to continue to press your way on despite of what others think about you. 
Hallelujah. You can't worry about the shame in your life. Hallelujah. When you, I can remember when I was, hallelujah, in my sins and in my mess. Hallelujah. I'm going to give my testimony this morning. Hallelujah. I, hallelujah, knew I was in a wreck. I knew my life was messed up. Hallelujah. But I had to make it. How many know that you get tired of being tired and you want to change your life? Hallelujah. And I found myself. How many know you can testify that your heart wasn't right one evening? Hallelujah. And hallelujah, you made yourself down to the altar. Hallelujah. And you smiling and you cried. You didn't care about who was looking. Hallelujah. You didn't care if your hair piece came off. Hallelujah. You, hallelujah, didn't care. Hallelujah. What you look like. Hallelujah. How ugly you look, hallelujah, but you made it down to the altar, hallelujah, you said, Lord, forgive me, hallelujah, and somebody tear with you, hallelujah, somebody knew about what you were going through, hallelujah, and they had been in the same situation before, hallelujah, and they, hallelujah, knew that you needed a Savior, hallelujah, and you knew, hallelujah, that the Son, hallelujah, Jesus could forgive you of your sins, and you made your way down to the altar, and you continue to cry, you continue to say, Lord, forgive me of my sins, hallelujah, Lord, Lord, I'm sorry, hallelujah. I know I haven't done all I should do, hallelujah. But, Lord, if you just give me another chance, hallelujah, I pour all that I have to you, hallelujah. I don't have much, hallelujah, but everything that I have, Lord, I give it to you because I know that you're able to do it, hallelujah. How many know that he's able to forgive you of all your sins, hallelujah? All you got to do is trust him. You got to keep the faith. Glory. Hallelujah. You can't worry about, hallelujah, you're trying to make it to Jesus. You're trying to get your life in order. Hallelujah. This woman wasn't concerned. She knew she wasn't, I said, she knew she wasn't supposed to be there. She was, hallelujah, regretful for what she had done and what she has been going through. And she, I said, she gave it to Jesus. She was grateful, hallelujah. And she made it down and she continued to wash Hallelujah, her feet with her, his feet with her tears. Hallelujah. All that she had, she gave it to him. And he forgave her of her sins. Hallelujah. And how many know what great joy she must have felt? Hallelujah. She came in one way. Hallelujah. But she went out another way. She came in a sinner. Hallelujah. But she came out of sight. Hallelujah. Number Lord, I say, hey. she had gained more from Jesus than those hallelujah those Pharisees that was there. Number Lord, I say, oh glory, hallelujah! She was able to step out there with her head up high, ha! Cause the number Lord, I say, the Master, number Lord, I say, had forgiven her. Oh glory be to God, hallelujah! How many can remember hallelujah when you came down to the altar and you got your life right? Hallelujah! You came out of there speaking in tongues, hallelujah! They they put you in the car and you were still speaking in tongues because you were still grateful. Ah, uh, He had blessed you. This about all I say. Oh glory! And you were ready to tell somebody else about the goodness of Jesus. Oh glory be to God. Oh God. God is able to forgive you of your failures, of your shortcomings. Because like I said before, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all got something that we're dealing with. Whoo, glory. Somebody dealing with something right now. Whoo, glory be to God. And the enemy is telling you, hallelujah, God ain't going to forgive you for that. Whoo. You walk down to that altar if you want to. They looking at you. Hallelujah. She's supposed to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. But yes, I can mess up too. About all I say. And God knows what you stand in need of. There's nothing hidden from Him. About all I say. We all got something we're dealing with, and we all need some help. Hallelujah. So don't let the enemy whisper in your ear and say, "Ah, oh, you know you saved. They, they know you got it all together." And tricked you out of getting your blessing. Amen. He will. But how many are not to, going to let the enemy do that to us today? We're not going to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I will not be ashamed. Because God is willing and ready to forgive you of your sins. And when we hurt 
somebody else. And we are in need of forgiveness. We got to get it right. Because we can't move forward until we get it right. We can't move forward until we get it right. So we got to make it to this altar and leave it there and then go back and apologize and get it right with that person that our sins may be forgiven because we all have something that we need to get forget, have, seek forgiveness of and I don't know who's going through anything today but I encourage you to take it to the one who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that we can ask or think how many know that no sin is out of the reach of God No sin. Nobody mm, all I say is out of reach of God. Oh, and I help me Holy Ghost. I don't know what you're going through, but God knows. And we got to give it to Him. You got to take it to the altar. Hallelujah. And how many want to seek peace this morning? He said He'll give you peace that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. The enemy don't want you to have no peace. He wants you to stay in that mess. He wants you to feel, he wants to beat up, beat you up with it so bad. He, ooh, he'll make it sound so bad that, ooh, God can't forgive you for that. But yes, he will. And we got to get peace this morning and give it to him because God loves you and he cares about what you're going through. And we have to continue to seek him with our whole heart, with our whole heart because God sees and knows the heart of man. Hallelujah. Just like he knew the heart of Simon. He knew Simon wasn't concerned about what this woman was going through. He just looked at her as a sinner. And we can't look down on others that don't look like us. When they come through these doors, they're seeking something. And it's our obligation to help them to get to Jesus. Hallelujah. And when they come down to this altar and pray, we should be not just sitting there seeking and looking around, but we should be interceding for these souls that is at the altar. It ain't time to be playing with the babies. It ain't time to be playing on your phone. Hallelujah. Because somebody's soul whew, is hanging in the balance. And they need Jesus. Hallelujah. You have to sometimes just see life and think about the time that you were in that same position. <clears throat> in verse 47 and 47, it said, Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Hallelujah. God wants to have, to, wants to reverse your shame. And he wants you to have a relationship with him. So we must continue to give God all the praise because he is the one who is able to reverse your shame and forgive you of sins. He is one that forgiveth all sins and he loves you just that much. God bless you in Jesus' name. Do we have any questions or comments? Hallelujah, concerning the lesson today, reversal of shame. If not, we turn the service over to Hallelujah, Minister Bob. Did she do a wonderful job this morning? Did she do a wonderful job on forgiveness? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that you've been, forgi been for forgiven for your sins? past, present, future sins, somebody will get excited on today because God forgave you for your sins. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for that day. We truly welcome every visitor that's here today. Truly want to welcome, welcome you with open arms today. If you're a first-time visitor this morning, truly we welcome you. Feel free to have your, free, feel free to serve God, worship God in the beauty of holiness. We thank God for everyone that's been in the, in the house of the Lord more time for Sunday school because there's a blessing being in the house of being in, this, in Sunday school. You don't understand. I guarantee. Just keep coming. 
Keep coming. I guarantee you're going to feel the mighty move of God change your life. You'll be productive in society, in home, in church, in school. I tell you, it's good to be in Sunday school. I'm excited about Sunday school. Shoot, I'm excited about Sunday school. Anybody excited about Sunday school on the day? Hey, hallelujah. Thank God for Sunday school. Amen. Amen. Truly in our heart. Let every heart pray. We pray our hearts and minds. We pray for our, we pray for our morning service. In Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, in your precious name, dear Lord, as we come once again before the throne of grace and mercy, Lord, we just want to say thank you right now, Lord. And as we come before your presence, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to, to forgive us for our sins, even though unconfessed sins in our life, Lord, even though sins that lie dominant in our spirit and our thoughts and even in our heart, Father God. Lord, you say if we confess our sin before you, Lord, that you be faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we come to be cleansed on today, Lord. We come to be healed and delivered on today, Lord. We wish you right now, Lord, you would bless every heart that's healed on today, Lord. Bless those that's on their way, Lord. Give them trial and mercy and grace, Lord. Bless the one that's going to bring forth your word on today, Lord. Lord, empower them with their anointing, Father God, as they stand before these, your people, Father God, that's bring forth your word, Father God. Let your word go forth, Lord. Let it penetrate the hearts of man, Father God, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, Lord. Continue to bless the, the pastor of this church, Father God, Lord. Continue to bless their family. Lord, continue to strengthen them, Father God, like only you can, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.